Wisconsin Stevens Point. And we didn't, we didn't run it uh, a ton, but we run it as a change-up defense. And the reason we ran it as a change-up defense is that it can really be tough to go against uh, at, at first. But once a team kind of gets a feel for it, like I said, you see that hole right there. There are holes in a 1-3-1 zone that you can get some really open, easy shots. And that's why you just need to be patient at times and, and, and kind of get a feel for where those holes are. How did that pass get through? Somehow did. One thing St. Pass is really doing a nice job of. Their ball movement's been great. Sharing the basketball, really playing team basketball. I can see why they're having so much success early in this season, having watched them play here for the first time, is they are absolutely locked in to playing together. Spinorama, wide open three. There you Nails go. it. That kid can shoot. You know that kid can shoot. He's taking two shots from about <laughs> the volleyball line. So that one, he finally got a regular three and he drilled it. Out to the three-point line. Driving in, the floater, traveled. What is the ref looking for on a play like that when he calls travel? Honestly, I don't know what he was looking at there. But, but <laughs> uh, you know, I think he maybe got a little confused by the kind of quick patter dribble that the kid took. Uh, that he got a little confused at that he actually picked the ball up. But it was really just a, a patter dribble that he used going into the lane. That, that was not a travel. So it's a steal by St. Patrick out to the three-point line. What's the ref looking for in terms of calling a reach-in foul versus a clean strip? Well, a, like right there you can get a reach-in foul. A clean strip generally is you're poking from behind. So you're looking to poke the ball from behind more on those, and that's what happened. He went by the man, and the man poked it from behind. Wide open three, but... So Ruiz comes off the bench, you know, Obviously, he's not one of their big scorers. And there's their big scorer finally getting a shot. And that's what I mean about, like, trying to hang in there. Because at some point, they got to be more consistent in getting the ball to uh, Tristan. And, uh, I don't want to mess up Walton. his name. Tristan Walton. But, they, you know, you go through a first quarter as a coach, you know, you hate to, you know, be down big and be like, boy, my best player only shot one time. <laughs> yeah, right. right. You, you kind of – that, that kind of is the hard thing is you, you – and that's what I mean by being just a little bit more patient and allowing for their best players to get more touches. Nice move. Shot is good, and it's good by RJ McPartland, six foot six. He's only a sophomore. That kid for sure looked really good on that move. A lot of size on the St. Patrick team. So you can't, can't make bounce passes through the middle like that. Look at that pump fake. But the better block, and Maine East gets the ball back. So Mean East, they're losing, partner, but they're playing aggressively right now. Yeah, hey, they're hung in, they're, they're down 10. I think if they could, tr see that was a tough shot again right there, just too early, even though that time it was their best player. Just taking a shot too quick. You know, there's 25 seconds left, you're down 10. If you hold the ball in this situation and maybe get a shot at the end and cut the lead to eight or seven at the first quarter, that would be great. But now you have the possibility of being down 12 I'll be interested to see strategically what they're going to do when they come down the court here, if they're going to be a little more patient. Obviously, you got to take against the press. You have to take a wide open layup. But if you don't get a wide open layup here, Maney needs to pull the ball out, play for one shot, and um, you know, hopefully if you knock it down, you're down 9 or 10, and that's certainly sustainable to come back. So 23-13, eight points thus far for Breland. Sorry, A.J. Thomas. They have a lot of uh, a lot of role players today with See, three right points. Right here, we're shooting that shot. Right, if he misses that, now you have the now now St. Pat's has the opportunity to go up 14, 15 yeah. points, and that would be just a very hard to come back yeah. from. And that's that's where I, I think St. Pat's did not come out exactly with the right mentality. Uh, Urbanis did not come out exactly with the right mentality as far as how they're going to play this game. Nice cut to the basket, and a layup is good by Thomas. 27-13 right now. It's all St. Patrick. We'll take a timeout. You're watching the Shamrocks against the Blue Demons here on SBS. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world.
Back to the action, Kyle Smith alongside David Edelman as the coaching staff for St. Patrick led by Michael Bailey. They look good, partner. Anything that they can work on in the second quarter? Well, I mean, I, I expect Manny's to come out and play better from here. But the Catholic League Conference in Chicago right now is really tremendous. And the, the competition they've been playing this year is really, you can see, this is a really good team. And uh, what I love more than anything about them right now is how well they share the ball. And they're two top players right now. It's, it's been a little too easy for them. So I'm hoping Maine East will make it a little tougher for those players. Um, you know, and, and Maine East just is going to need to play a little better. Coach Burrow has done a great job with this program in a very short time. He's made this program competitive. Um, and they've been competitive this year with a very good record. So, and they got thrown in to play this game. I think they're really excited. I think their excitement is really shown. Um, and the inability to necessarily maybe prepare for what wow. they were facing has kind of affected them. That time they foul. That's, that's been the trouble, David, in this game thus far for Maine East is St. Patrick dominating the paint right now, and it's even hard for Maine East to try to foul to force them to make it at the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, St. Pat's size has been has been really uh, effective in there, obviously. I mean, number 11 is a good player here, uh, A.J. Thomas. Thomas. He's a good player. First time getting a chance to see him talking to Coach Bailey before the game, said, hey, our two best players are A.J. Thomas and A.J. Breland, and they're, they're both college-level players, what level that is. Um, certainly don't know at this stage, but, but they've come out and played really well and, and certainly have shown they're the two best players on the court. Starting to get away from Maine East right now, already down 16. Now it's 30 to 13. And St. Patrick not quitting. They're maintaining the pressure on the full court press. There you go. See, more possessions than what we just saw right there. More possessions than what we saw right there. That, that's a really good possession that ends in a shot. Just, uh, so I, I I'm interested, you know, a timeout in that situation could be, hey, you know what? This is how we got to play. Right. Where a coach says, this is how we got to play. A and, and now let's try to see if we can play more like that consistently. You know, and, and that's why I assume that he took that timeout because they've been struggling. Uh, what, it was 27. Uh, they're down 17 points. And, and that was the best play from the game. And you could see it right from the start. You know, yeah. that just pass back and forth, the patience. They look good on that possession, but can they be consistent with it? That's the question going forward. Yeah, I haven't seen them play enough <laughs> this year to know yeah. how they play consistently. And, and like I said, they weren't able to prepare for this game because they just decided to play this game late last right. night. So you didn't get the practice time. And like I said, a 1-3-1 one, one zone and a, a press like this is very specific in how you're going to play against it. And like I said, what they just did right there, just patience back and forth not having to think they got to beat it right away. And then eventually they made all the right plays. And, and, and like I said, a 1-3-1, one, one, there are holes to defeat it. And then you got to make the shots and make the plays. Yeah. And right there was a great job by them. Hopefully they can be a little more consistent there. And then it also starts with, hey, they can't set up in that press if you stop them. Right? They haven't stopped them at all. Right. So that's the next step is, all right, can we play some defense and get some stops? It looks like it looks like they're going to go to the same defense here. So now we're looking at the same defense, which obviously Coach Burrow learned this uh, under Coach Bailey. Stolen away, Maine East, two on two now. Tries to kick it out to the three-point line and does the triple, and no good. They're trying to find their way back in this game with threes, David. It's not working thus far. Yeah, well, they just hit one. They're going to have to hit some. That three, no good. But it starts right there. That, that's that's the problem. <laughs> he you is know. a problem, but they don't seem to have a solution for <laughs> him yet. Right. St. Pat's is on pace for about 90 points or so in this game. You're not winning this game if they score 90. Yeah, I don't think uh, the teenage version of Kobe Bryant's coming to the gym today. That layup's good. To score the points, that would be necessary for a team go scoring 90 on you. 34-16. Open three, no good. Offensive board, as Shriver like trying to get it to go, but can't, and Thomas gets it. Thomas, space on the floor well, the pass gets through. Ill-advised pass, but David, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. This triple is good. 
Yeah, I mean, right now, St. Pat's is able to play at this fast pace, and Maine East defensively is not able to really keep up with them defensively. And then offensively, like I said, everything is so fast. Good drive to the basket. Remember, no continuation in high school, but that was clearly in the act of shooting when he got the layup up. Yeah, and that was nice, obviously nice drive. And if there was one thing that I know Coach Bailey will probably talk about a little bit is their backline defense. There's too often their backline defense kind of allows for an easy basket situation. You know, when you pressure up, when you pressure up like they are, you know that you're going to give up some open shots and some open threes. What you want to do is you want your backline defense to be a backline yeah. defense as best as possible. So right there, if you're going to foul them, don't let them make the basket. When does Maine East decide to use a full court press to try to get back in this game? You know, I, I think if uh, second half you might see some of that, or if they're able to get, if they're able to kind of get back into the game a little bit, maybe they'll pick up a little bit more. But I think they're just going to pressure in the half court. You know, you see, St. Pat's isn't pulling the ball out and forcing them to have to, you know, press at this stage either. That 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 would that would that would kind of push their hand if St. Pat's decided to play more uh, a slower at slower tempo. Mid-range jumper good by Walton. Yeah, Walton's starting to heat up there. He's got probably eight now. But this is a problem. They just can't, they're just not defending well enough at the basket. How and do they uh, try to kick these six foot six and six foot seven power forwards and center out of the lane so they're not rebounding offensively? Well, it starts with keeping the guards out of the lane, you know, because the guards are coming in, so the natural help is what's allowing those guys to be open right now. Shot is good. He's got a nice touch for a six foot six guy. Yeah, he shoots the ball over top of his head right there, uh, but he's knocking it down nice and straight. See if he has the, the Dirk touch on this shot, and he does. It's always nice when you got a big man who knocks down free throws because they're going to get free throws. Right. And, you know, one of the, sometimes it can be deflating to a team. You run the great offense, you get the ball inside. A, a shot real close to the basket. Guy gets fouled and then he goes 0 for 2. That's what made those Lakers teams so interesting. They would win championships in spite of Shaq missing all those free throws. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, I, like I said, the situations where the best play on your team is to get it to your big guy, but then at the end of the game, if that best play results in him shooting free throws, right. then it doesn't become the best play anymore. And that's why Shaq needed a player like Kobe or Dwayne Wade, because at the end of the game, the best play wasn't necessarily throwing the ball to Shaq any longer. Makes basketball so interesting, right? That's why Steve Nash and Stephen Curry, not only do they have value shooting the ball, is that three-pointer's good by Cooper Kavanaugh, but they're so valuable down the stretch with that 90-plus percent free throw shooting. Yep. You know, St. Pat's got a pretty young team here as well. You know, a lot of juniors and some sophomores on this team. A young team. This team's going to be very good for, for a few years. And he is just a force on the glass, isn't he, in 32, uh, R.J. McPartland. Yeah, I mean, he's really, he's really been good. But this is right there. You see how they're getting into the lane pretty easy. The big guys from Maine East might have to stay home and just let the guards shoot the floaters because every time they kick it out to McPartland, McPartland dominates them on the glass. Again, nice patience here, you know, nice patience there. Got the ball inside, you know, for sure Alphonse, 15, is struggling a little bit with the size. You know, he's he's a big, strong kid. You can see he's a really big, strong kid, but the size of 32, you know, McPartland, and obviously uh, Thomas and Breland, like those guys are long. He's struggling a little bit when he catches the ball in there. At the three-point line, in and out, and good rebound for Walton, but ill-advised pass, and here comes St. Pat's again. Open tray, he tries it again. This time it's good for Harper Krolak. Yeah, there's too many of those kinds of turnovers. Too many of those kinds of turnovers, and that's when you're just not playing well when you're making turnovers like you just saw Tristan have. Off the glass, no. Rebounded by McParlin, what else is new? So partner, when you're up by this many points, 
Can you try new things that you don't practice as much since you're up by a big lead? Right now, you know, right now it's too early to start doing those things. What you want your team to do right now is you want them just playing. You don't want to you don't want to take your foot off the gas pedal. Now, when you start to see them play uh, casual, you know, or or like right there, that was a bad possession. If you get to there, then you're gonna you're gonna see Coach Bailey call timeout. I wouldn't be surprised if they score here that Coach Bailey calls timeout. But you see too many of those kinds of turnovers right now. Good contest without fouling by Walton, but uh, even better layup by it's, Cooper Kavanaugh. And so those turnovers happen when players are thinking about scoring so much that everyone's really thinking about scoring. And that's one thing that I would talk to my team about in a situation like this is, hey, the passing is what's going to lead to the scoring. Almost all their baskets have come off of a nice pass, right? A kick out for a yeah. three. So trying to get them to understand that, that, hey, don't worry about your individual scoring your individual game right now. Because they're playing zone, it's not about the individual. It's about how our team offense will get us the shots we want. 47-27 as just substitutions, no timeout by Coach Bailey. Yeah, once they scored that basket, that takes out. Like I said, if you go down, you give up a three, shoot a bad quick shot, they come down, score again. Then a coach might say, all right, let me make sure that we get back into what we want to do. Uh, but once they got the seal and the layup, that takes that away. They're back into their regular rhythm. Well, Main East is down 20. They've only committed three fouls. They could commit some fouls. And, well, there's a steal and a layup. I mean, you're right, partner. Just too many steals, too many turnovers so, uh, yeah, too by many Main East right now. And you can tell Tristan's very frustrated right here. If Main East gets... Uh, as that's another steal, my goodness. Oh, ho, ho, ho. slam a jamma by Navea Hawkins. That's when it's fun. That's when it's having when you're just having fun. Are you surprised that Maine East allowed him to dunk that and didn't try to foul? No, that would have been bad if they tried to foul. They would have hurt him. Uh, no, that, you know, you could tell they're a little deflated right there. Right, yeah. Uh, they're a little deflated right there. You know, the second half, obviously, Coach Burrow is going to try to talk about, hey, 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's see if we can play a better half than we played the first. Right. Really, more than anything, it's that third quarter because the fourth quarter, you you know, with the way this game is going, St. Pat's is going to play most of their bench players, obviously, in that fourth quarter. So you're hoping for that third quarter. Hey, what, what can we do better to feel confident against this level of competition? If Mother Nature had cooperated today, what would you have seen from Joliet West that would have given St. Patrick some fits? I, you know, I... I wish I could answer that question for you, Kyle. I haven't seen Joliet West play. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not covering high school basketball <laughs> on the regular. I'm uh, running my Play Hard Hoops basketball program, working with young kids. Um, but it's exciting to come out here and watch high school basketball. The game before this was a really exciting game you got a chance to watch. What are some of your best success stories at Play Hard Hoops at the high school and college level? Well, you know, Jackson Davis, who's a freshman at Warren, that's a star player right now. He, he did some play hard hoops when he was a young kid. And, um, you know, out here in the city, there was a kid named A.J. Ramsa and Sam Maniscalco. Sam, Sam Maniscalco played at St. Pat's. They did play hard hoops at one time. So, you know, we've had a lot of kids that have gone out and done some nice things in basketball. Pretty cool that Corey McGetty went to Fenwick. Yeah, I remember those teams. We actually recruited a kid uh, from Fenwick named Chris Williams to Loyola when I coached there. My goodness. Just dominating the glass. They get the board and the layup. 58-32. It's just tough sledding for Maine East when you're going up against a 1-3-1 with no practice time to get ready for it. Yeah, I mean, I think that part, you know, the coach will be okay with. You know, that's, that's something that's a good learning experience. The defense giving up 58 points. You can't survive. Um giving up 58 points. Even when you play against a better team, you have to find a way defensively. And that's what I'm sure he'll focus on a lot, you know, after yeah. this game is, all right, we've got to become a better defensive team. We'll take a break for five minutes. We've got stat crew, so we'll look at the stat crew stats of what we've got for you. But right now, 58-32 lead in favor of St. Patrick here on SBS. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world.
This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Good, looking sharp in both crews. This is really an excellent race. St. Ignatius at that 34, 35. You can hear the fans here. Loyola looking excellent as well. Here comes the Loyola Ramblers. Good. Good, and we've got some open water there, some open water between St. Ignatius and Loyola. We've got, you know, maybe about a boat length open.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kyle Smith alongside David Edelman. 26-point lead for St. Patrick's, and one of the reasons for that, partner, not a great game from Walton. He committed six turnovers in that first half. Yeah, and certainly, uh, you know, that's not all on Tristan, the entire team. I think tried to play maybe a little too fast against the zone. Uh, playing against, you know, obviously a really good team as well. But the turnovers just absolutely, you know, is the reason why instead of maybe being down 10 or having an opportunity to be still in this game, that we're looking at the score, 26 points. One of the good things for Maine East, there weren't a many, but there were some. They didn't foul a lot. Now they're down by a lot. Do they consider fouling more and making St. Patrick earn it at the charity strike? Well, I, I think Coach Merle for sure is talking about it, and that's why number four is in here starting. He, he wants them competitive here. You got, they, they got to be more competitive than they were in the first half, and that does start with not just giving up easy laps. I give up 58 points in the first half and only foul three times, I'm pretty upset. Because that speaks to your aggression. Yeah. You know, it speaks to your aggression on defense. It's one thing to get beat, it's another thing to get beat because you're not competing hard enough. Right. So they're going to compete harder. You can see in that first possession they competed harder yeah. right from the start. And it'll be interesting, does St. Patrick's keep up the pressure? Right. And as good as St. Patrick is. Nice is, pass. Yeah, it was. This isn't the Chicago Bulls at the free throw line. See what they can do. If they, ma if they make both of their shots, then they made both of their shots. But you're right, giving up 58 points well, th and this, only three fouls. This is now the game for Coach Murrow. You know, this is this is now the game, and you see they did foul in this situation. Right. But this is now the game from the third quarter, because the first the first half obviously was a disaster. So what he's saying is, okay, this third quarter, let's see how we could play this team. Let's see if we're a different team. Let's see with some adjustments our talk, because the fourth quarter, like I said, unless they do really bring the score down, the fourth quarter you're gonna be looking at the running clock, the backups in, yeah, and so now you're not gonna get a real relative understanding of how you played against them. So this quarter and this part of the game is really important to coach. Missed that free throw. 59-34 on pace for 116 points is St. Patrick. Bounce pass in the lane. Tough shot. E no even good. though they didn't score on that shot, that was the kind of possession you really needed to see more in the first half. You know, the pass back and forth, much better, much better offensive right. possession. They fouled, they forced them to make him at the charity stripe, something that Maynese didn't do a lot of in the first half. Yeah, they're still struggling to handle the speed with which St. Patrick moves the basketball. And so they're getting into the lane pretty easily. But at least like you said here, they're, they're trying to be more competitive and they're forcing them to make the free throws here, which yeah. are one for three now, yeah. rather than just giving them uncontested layups. What do you think's gonna win that Steelers-Bills game today in the, what, 68 inches of snow in Buffalo they got? You know, I would probably take Buffalo, but uh, I do think the Steelers are gonna cover the spread. There's talk that the Steelers might trade for Justin Fields in the offseason if they lose today. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard that one, but uh, I, I, I am going to hope and assume that the Bears are going to make some sort of quarterback decision well, they've been that making, will benefit uh, the team next year. They've been making quarterback decisions to benefit the team since the 1940s, and it hasn't really worked out. Well, that's why they got to get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, 78th time's the charm? Good job keeping that play uh, basketball in bounds. Another steal, but really, partner, that was an excellent play by Hawkins. Uh, yeah, and, and right there again, he's hustling for that for that steal, and, and and that's why I mean those are the shots that we don't need that shot. Great defense, great job, great job by Jalen to get that steal. Let's let's run our offense. Let's see if we run our offense if we can consistently get a good shot. You know, we've talked a lot about the size on the St. Patrick team. We talked about McPartland, and we have, haven't talked a lot about the bench players and Casper Coel at 6'7", now Caleb Bedeckis in the game at 6'5". Open man in the lane, layup no good. Just nothing's falling right now for the Blue Demons. Yeah, good, good job though, you know, again, good possession right there, good pass by Tristan. How can Maine East combat some of the size from St. Patrick? Just what you saw right there, you know, they did a nice job pressuring. 
Um, did a nice set pressure, you know, but a lot of it, you know, so much of their de defense has been in transition where they can't get the defense set. So certainly Coach Murrow would have liked to seen their defense go against them in a more set position. They certainly would have had more success. There it is, great job using the ball fake there. And it is a basket good for J.J. Alphonse. And there Tristan did a nice job. He held the ball strong, waited for the pass to present itself. No need to shoot the three. St. Pat's can run some clock here if they want to. Well, like I said, right now they're still playing. You know, they're just playing. He's not really um, trying to slow the game down. They, they just want to keep playing. You know, but the one thing they've done the entire game, this team is playing together, St. Pat's. I see why this team is tough, you know. Out of bounds. And, and you're seeing a better job in this half, though, of Maney's looking to make the right passes. I think the mentality is much better here in the second half than what we saw early in the game. But St. Pat's offensively really impressed with them, really impressed with how they share the basketball. Every player is involved in the game. See, everyone who drives in is not just shooting the ball, right? Yeah. They drive in hoping to see what's the best play. Three-point shot good by Breland. Breland's one of their best players, partner. They don't really need to use him, though, because Hawkins and Thomas is so good today. Yeah, they, they haven't needed him to do a ton, but he's had, he's had a pretty good game. He's got 13 points, I believe. Yeah, 14 for Thomas, 13 for Breland. Hawkins' day, he's on the bench. His day is most likely over. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Possibly. Yep, they're going to put him back in yeah, he's for one in. more. Yeah, usually usually you, you'll go through three quarters in this situation. Who do you like in the nightcap bet between uh, the Eagles and the Buccaneers? I don't like anyone. <laughs> 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 Who do I think wins the game? I, 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 certainly Philadelphia, obviously. You can never count out a team that had the kind of success they had last year. But they haven't had that kind of success this year. But they've year. really been bad. Um, and I like Tampa Bay the way Tampa Bay's played down the stretch. So if I was, I guess, had to put uh, money on the game, I probably would put it on the Buccaneers. I would probably put that money on the under if I was a better though today. No A.J. Brown tonight, and Jalen Hurts broke his finger last yeah, week. Yeah, I, I, I would expect that game to be a pretty low-scoring game. And then, yeah, Baker Mayfield's got the injured ribs and the ankle. Three-point shots contested, no good. Did you like that shot or kind of force that one up? No, I, you know, like I said, at this stage of the game as a coach, you're not, you're not going to be real uh, worried about the kinds of shots. He's a, he's a good player. He's shooting a kind of shot that, that he's going to have to be able to make in certain games. Like I said, what you're doing is you're just letting your team play because they're probably not playing in the fourth quarter. So let these guys play, get their shots. As you can see, the coaches are pretty relaxed there on the bench right now. <laughs> well, Coach Burrow is pacing, and, and and you can see the frustration. Yeah. You can see St. Pat's coach are pretty relaxed at the moment. That's, that's what happens in a game like this. Turning the ball over or turning the puck over, whatever sport you want to talk about, it just usually doesn't lead to victories. The stat yesterday, sorry, on Saturday, about the Cleveland Browns being the first team in 20 years to make the postseason after leading the NFL in turnovers. I mean, that pretty much tells you in sports, you turn the ball over, you're not gonna win games. Main East turn the ball over, one of the reasons they're getting blown out right now. And defense, you gotta play great defense. You know, defense gives you a chance. You know, defense gives you a chance to win. So obviously we talked about early number 10, Schreiber who's a sophomore, coach was really high on him comes out, shoots a couple deep threes early in the game. You get sense, you know, today was a, is a learning experience day for him as a sophomore. You know, right there, uh, Neve Hawkins just took him, took him to school down low. And that's what you're hoping for your young players. Manny's has a lot of young players as well on this team. You know, a kid who's really impressed me, uh, kind of unsung, is a really good player, this 24, Harper Krolik. He's a good player that I think, you know, Breland obviously and Thomas are the talents, but, um, He's a really solid player that understands his role, 
plays aggressively but understands what he's doing within playing aggressively. See right there, but now not a good pass, but I like what he was looking for. And, and that's the difference between being talented and a good player. He's a good player. He's not as talented as some of the top players, but he's a good player, understands what he's trying to do. He'll learn from that pass here. Coach is gonna talk to him a little bit about the angle and what he's looking for there. I mean, plus if you get trapped like that, you've got all five timeouts. You, you, could, you could call a timeout there if you wanted to, but yeah, you're right. The pass wasn't the best that well, time by Harper Krolak. He, he knew what he wanted to do. He actually had the play there in front of him. He just wasn't able to deliver the, the pass in the way he needed to. Yeah. But understanding the right play, and that's what coaches are looking at here. Are you still making the right plays? That's what a coach is really looking for. Anything that St. Patrick needs to work on if they want to make a run at state? You know, offensively, I haven't seen anything. I couldn't really talk offensively, obviously. It's just been too easy for them here. Defensively, sometimes they're back line on the defense. Defensively, I think they, they're, they're not aggressive enough at the, end of the, at the end of the play at times. Give up some layups. Uh, they do, at times, go for pass fakes a little bit too much. Really strong, solid pass fakes uh, could could hurt them in this zone. So coach has got to talk about being a little quicker and understanding that, hey, if someone's pass faking, don't get yourself so quickly out of yeah. position. Uh, those are probably little things that, from what I've seen today, they can improve defensively. Uh, offensively, like I said, they've, it's really been an easy day for them. It's hard to pick out something negative. Uh, and, and what I've liked the most is they're really playing together. 71-39 game on this Sports Monday in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Obviously, we all know the I Have a Dream speech, but more iconic Dr. Luther King moments that come to your mind, David. Uh, well, moments, obviously, I wasn't born when uh, Dr. King right. was alive, but, you know, obviously just appreciating this day and today's a, bit, a big day for basketball you know the NBA plays on this day uh, as we know basketball and the NBA and college basketball um, is a big part of the progress for African-American athletes yeah. and um, you know this is an important day uh, for our country you know, one of the most important days that our country has every year and it's, it's why we're off school yeah, off school some of us off work others not so much, or they played well, hooky to be at this, this game Is this today. really work? This isn't work. Does this <laughs> really work? This is this is this is fun. We're watching basketball. Anyone right. who says that they watch basketball feels like work probably should not be in this, right? You know, it's one thing. The guys who are working are those coaches. Those coaches are working. They are worried. Coach Burrow, he's not going to have an, an easy supper tonight. You know, he he's got a he's got a tough night. For us, we walk out of here. This is uh, this is. This is, this is a great great time. I appreciate right. you having me out here. A lot of fun. Obviously seeing Coach uh, Bailey, Coach Biancolato, who I've known since I was a kid, watching these guys do their thing. And, and they're such good coaches, and you can see how well coached their team is. Uh, you, you know, for Coach Burrow, I, I, this was fun for him to get an opportunity to play against the coach who mentored him. And Coach Burrow, like I said, they're 11-7 and seven this year. They got good players over there at Vadies. He's done a really good job with this with this program, getting them competitive really quickly. And uh, the future's bright. Like they got a lot of young players on this team that are just going to get better. And this will be a good learning experience for them, playing against a powerhouse in the Catholic League uh, Conference. You know, and they've got one win against the Catholic League team. They beat Notre Dame, which was a huge win for this program. Look at that rebound by McPartland. He's just an absolute beast down low. That was a, uh, boy, I'm, I'm a little bit in awe today because they just let him dunk. Uh, Alphonse, who's a good player, just was like, I'm not even getting in the way of that thing tonight. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a little surprised by that because it's one thing to lose, but they're dunking. I know you don't want to foul to, to create an injury, but you also don't want to be embarrassed either on the court. Well, I think he didn't want to get embarrassed, maybe dunked on him. That that's true, that's too. true. <laughs> I think he saw that as, all right, I see what's coming here. And, and that's, you know, remember, it's a 30-point game. So sometimes you are picking your battles on that. Well, unless things change, we're going to get a running clock in the fourth quarter. 
as St. Pat's just wait until the last second to shoot. And good shot by Curran. Stolen away by Hawkins. At the buzzer, no. Yeah, you know, games like this are really tough. And the most important thing when you have a game like this, when you're the team that wins, you can't allow winning a game like this. Uh, yeah. We gotta go to break, I assume. Right, so yeah. We'll talk after. We'll talk about it after the break. It's 75-40 in favor of St. Pat's here on SBS. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Good, looking sharp in both crews. This is really an excellent race. St. Ignatius at that 34, 35. You can hear the fans here. Loyola looking excellent as well. Here comes the Loyola Ramblers. Good. Good, and we've got some open water there, some open water between St. Ignatius and Loyola. We've got, you know, maybe about a boat length open. Seventy-five forty. We appreciate everybody watching today's broadcast, including the Irish Nationalists on YouTube. Up thirty-five is uh, St. Patrick and uh, David. Mama said there'd be days like this. Mama said for Maine East today. <laughs> yeah, and, and and for St. Pat's too. So, you know, I, I, to talk about both teams, you know, one of the things I always worried about as a coach was after you won a game like this, where the other team maybe didn't compete as hard as they should have, or maybe you even played so well is that sometimes you don't come out the next game with the intensity that you need because you're just like oh this game was so easy that's how it's always going to be so sometimes the best time to bet against a team is after they win a game like this because it almost naturally softens them up um and then on the other end for for main east obviously for coach burrow is how do we come back from this you know you got to point out to the players that that didn't necessarily play as competitively as they needed to 